good. I think he could be looking me in the eye, you know, and I could just be choking the life out. Is this wrong? They are traitors to this country and shoot them. But anybody who would do that doesn't deserve to, to live. You shoot them. You call them traitors, that's what they are, and you shoot them dead. I'll pay for the bullet. That wasn't the cries of the downtrodden. That's the cries of the useless, the worthless. New Orleans was a welfare city, a city of parasites. I'll tell you what autism is in 99% of the cases. It's a brat who hasn't been told to cut the act out. And die, you pig. How's that? Why don't you see if you can sue me, you pig? Piece of garbage? You got nothing to do today? Go eat a sausage and choke on it. Get trichinosis. Muslims don't eat during the day during Ramadan. They fast during the day and eat at night. Sort of like cockroaches. Uh, until I voted for Barack Obama in the last election, I'm a lifelong Republican. And so when O'Reilly talks about the fact that these people of the far left are against Fox or against him or trying to muzzle debate, um, he's telling a lie. His son was the Supreme Court Justice who noted in a famous opinion that you cannot falsely shout fire in a crowded theater. You know the American Revolution took place with 12% of the population? 12. You tell me there's not 30% of this population that you will have to shoot me in the forehead before I let somebody into my house to tell me how to raise my children. You will have to shoot me in the forehead before you take away my gun. You will have to shoot me in the forehead before I acquiesce and be silent. That's because words have consequences, and not just in politics. People in Knoxville, Tennessee, are asking if one of those consequences could be murder. I need you, out of those 20 or 30 million people, to realize that you have a special place, that you have a job to do yourself, and you do it. Don't try to connect with anyone else. It's your job. He was shot and killed in a church in Wichita, Kansas this morning as he was serving as an usher and as his wife, a member of the choir, looked on. You know why they're doing what they're doing. You need to do what you need to do. On a steamy Sunday morning in July, a man armed with a 12-gauge shotgun burst into this church in Knoxville, Tennessee, and opened fire. The deadly shooting happened shortly after the start of Sunday morning services inside this Wichita Lutheran church. Another horrible crime story, as in the past, this is a story with serious political implications. That weekend tragedy involves a heart-wrenching that something in our community could happen as evil as this. Tonight, authorities confirm they have a suspect in custody. The man who walked into this sanctuary on July 27th was armed with a gun, but he was also armed with hatred. He was armed with bitterness. He was armed with resentments. He was armed with indiscriminate anger. No doubt watching Fox News and listening to and spirit. You know, the American Revolution took place with 12% of the population. 12 you tell me there's not 30 percent of this compliments of you will have Fox to shoot News me in the forehead in before night. I let That's somebody into my house to tell me how to raise my children night, you will have to shoot me in the forehead before you take away my gun you will have to shoot me in the forehead before I acquiesce and be silent well words have consequences and what we did in the 70s and 80s my father Dr. Francis Schaefer Dr. C. Everett Koop who became Reagan's Surgeon General Members of the Republican Party. Members of the congregation wrestled a 58-year-old unemployed truck driver named Jim David Atkison to the floor. The Roman Catholic allies that we had in the church, uh, various people, we talked and our talk got more and more extreme and less and less democratic. And held him until police came. At first it seemed like just another inexplicable outburst of violence. There's a direct line connecting the rhetoric that I was part of as a young man and this murder. Until a police news conference the next day. It appears that what brought him to this horrible event was stated hatred for the liberal movement. And so people like me uh, are responsible for what we said and what we did and the way we raised the temperature on this debate 
out of all bounds. I need you, out of those 20 or 30 million people, to realize that you have a special place, that you have a job to do yourself, and you do it. Why did Atkinson hate the liberal movement? Police said that he told them that all liberals should be killed because they were ruining the country. And so when O'Reilly talks about the fact that these people of the far left are against Fox or against him or trying to muzzle debate, um, he's telling a lie. Don't try to connect with anyone else. It's your job. And that he felt that the Democrats had tied his country's hands in the war on terror and ruined every institution in America. Arkansas Democratic Party Chairman Bill Gwantney died after a gunman barged into the Arkansas Democratic Party headquarters Wednesday and shot him three times. Pretending these words don't have an impact is crazy. So this is what uh, helps unhinge a society talking like this and I was part of that and that's why I apologized and I would apologize again I am sorry for what I did the suspect then sped away from the scene but was later shot and killed following a 30 mile police chase and uh, and I think that people who say extreme things should stand up and take the consequences and admit when they were wrong uh, he's a white male approximately 50 years old he is from Arkansas we were wrong we were wrong morally and we were wrong politically and as a believing Christian, I was wrong in terms of someone who says he follows Jesus Christ. Witnesses said the man walked into the party office and said he was interested in volunteering. Then he suddenly opened fire just before noon. Police said that Adkison had targeted the Unitarian Universalist Church because of its liberal teaching. You know why they're doing what they're doing. You need to do what you need to do. According to police, Adkison said that because he could not get to the leaders of the liberal movement, that he would target those that had voted them into office. What we did is we talked one game to the large public and we talked another game amongst ourselves. And amongst ourselves, we were very radical. In the weeks following the tragedy, the congregation and its pastor, Reverend Chris Bice, struggled with what they were learning about Adkison. But on a private side, we also were egging people on. People were injured. A man came in here, totally dehumanized us. We knew full well that in a country that had seen the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King, two Kennedy brothers and others, that what we were also doing was opening a gate here. And I think there's no way to duck this. But I know there are eight million people in this audience. We live in a country in which guns are all over the place. There are two million people every single night that listen to me. We have plenty of people with a screw loose, plenty of people on the edge. It only takes one. I need you, out of those 20 or 30 million people, to realize that you have a special place, that you have a job to do yourself, and you do it. And what scares me is that I see the rhetoric of the Republican Party right now, including the former vice president, about our newly elected African-American president has the same sort of coded stuff in it. Don't try to connect with anyone else. It's your job. You need to do what you want. Some have suggested that his spiritual attitudes, his hatred of liberals and gays was reinforced by the right wing media figures. Palin then provides supporters with a map of the districts currently held by the targeted Dems indicating location through gun crosshairs. Uh, he's not a real American. He's making America less safe. Uh, he's a secret Muslim. Uh, some Christians in the same groups that are pro-life groups are running around saying he's the Antichrist. Numbers on Earth by the latest Harris poll. And it is beyond dispute that there is a plethora of books have labeled liberals as evil. They also know full well that we have people out there who would take it to the next step and say, well, gee, if he's the Antichrist, if he's anti-American, if he's a communist, maybe the best thing we can do is pull another trigger. One book has the title, Deliver Us From Evil, Defeating Terrorism, Despotism, and Liberalism. It is irresponsible for people to just make these wild statements like Bill O'Reilly does and then step back after it happens and say, oh, I never meant that. That author, we're here in this room right now. I would introduce him to some good liberals who know how to fight terror with more than just their mouths. Yes, they did mean it. 
They meant exactly what they said. And when you start calling people those sorts of names, the way I did back in the 70s and early 80s, if people don't stand up and actually take back these words, take back these angry words, they are still culpable for the next event that happens. And we need to be able to just call it what it is.